you know what I love on a summer day is that I can come by the pool and I know that my gear never gets wet. <laughs> Welcome to the gin show. <laughs> All right, I'm cool with this. I'm just so wet. My camera's not though. Anyway, what's up YouTube? And welcome back to the gin show. Today, I got something very special. Obviously, you have an idea of what's going on, but you really don't know exactly what we're doing today and I will tell you today we're getting wet without getting wet because we're gonna review this peculiarly shaped camera condom known as the Outex. For those who don't know me I'm Jennifer Carson and I'm a creative and this is my show where I talk about basically anything I want, and sometimes I get other people in here to talk about what they want. Today we're focusing around my latest interest, which is underwater videography. I have explored so many different options for how this can be achieved. It basically goes down into two categories. Your first category are expensive boxes that can still get your camera wet. And then there are less expensive bags that can also get your camera wet. So there's two categories. And after some research, I looked at the under $100 bags I looked in cases. I looked at even the more expensive cases on the half of grand and up. And I landed on something in the middle called the Outex. And it is this silicone sleeve with various other pieces, specifically pieces of glass that I really, really, really like. All together, this is my unboxing review installation guide and some neat cool B-roll of the Outex Pro, which is a bundle that you can purchase online for less than $500. So anyway, let's get started. First, we're gonna clean off this desk. Look at all the stuff that comes in the box. Ooh. We got an Outex, we got a sticker. All right, we've got the cover, the housing, we've got a neck strap. I think that is another type of strap. This is the strap holders. We've got a box, sounds like glass. And another box that sounds like glass. And this is what you get in the pro package, not just the standard basic package. And the housing is, if I can get it, the housing is like pure silicone. You know what it feels like? It feels like <laughs> it's so squishy. Anyway, this is where your camera goes. And of course you have your straps with it. And they gave you a lot of different types of straps. Ooh, and there's so much foam here. I guess because it floats. I think this is what holds the straps onto the camera. This is a harness that goes around your camera, clips in, and then, then you can like strap things to it. 
And then this is going to be the wrist strap. So you can go here with it. Essentially the same material, very thick foam. It looks like it probably floats. And we've got a little branding. I see you with your branding. Oof. Okay, that away. Oh glass, nice glass, look at that. This is actually one of the reasons why I went with this brand in my research for like an underwater housing. Over time, I plan on using this in my travels. I plan on using this in, you know, a lot of different scenarios, things that I'm gonna talk about in the video. I also know that a lot of the other kits that are out there are made with plastic or acrylic. And over time that can scratch and glass is a lot harder. So it doesn't scratch as easy. Yes, you can always replace it. And like, if you crack that glass, you've got to replace it. But I think that this is going to get a better image. And it's really awesome because this uses the threads of your camera lens to attach. Well, essentially, you know, put on like this, as opposed to just being in the bag and floating around in your bag. So that's gonna be really cool. And everything I get fits the 82 because uh, even on smaller lenses that I have, I will step up, use a step up ring to hit 82. So that lets me uh, standardize to like 82 millimeter rings. Throwing this away. Let me show you something. This is a scale. This is a bowl. Just to take this while traveling, my minimalistic setup could be the housing, the glass, and the glass, and probably these little bits. We're looking at 0.9 pounds. And if I wanted to include everything, uh, we're looking at a pound and a third, but I wouldn't carry everything, probably. But the point is, this folds up to nothing. I can take it with me, put it in a bag. I can, you know, get some sort of carrying case for this. We're in a really awesome place. Can I shoot in water when I travel, which is often rain, you could be near a hotel pool. If it's dusty, uh, that could be a reason why you may want to use this. You know, I play paintball sometimes. So just making sure I can take this to the paintball field. And if I do that when I travel and my camera is protected from the markers that are out there, the dust, the dirt, the mud. And this is just an all around pretty good housing. So it's travel friendly in my opinion. And I'm interested to see how it works underwater. One way to learn how to install this is to take it apart. That's usually the best way that I learned. So let's get started. So we'll go in reverse this time. Always get your play mat because flex. And this is what we're taking apart. This is what it looks like fully assembled. And I even put a Luma cube inside and I sucked out all the air during my shoot in the, <laughs> the community pool that we have here. So what we wanna do is identify the parts and pieces. Um, so, of course, you have the housing here, you have the front glass and the rear glass. You also have the, the bracket that holds everything together connected here. Um, and what you're going to do 
to take it apart, also to put it together, is honestly start with your glass, right? Or end with your glass. So this is the screw on function and you can see how it's working, right? So I have this on the glass and this came off as two pieces, remember? So it's two pieces. And the way this works is, do you see that lip on this side? There should be like a little lip here. You want that facing inwards because that really grabs on to this edge, right? This edge has a lip here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's designed to kind of fit in the groove that's right there. You'll see the groove in the, in the reflection. It goes over it, and then you tighten it down, making a pretty good seal. Obviously, good enough. So that is what goes on top of your silicone housing, but your silicone housing goes on top of the other thread. And what's really nice about this, and why this is a pretty darn good design, especially for the cost, is that this lens cover, this lens cap, fits directly and it integrates directly into your lens. So you can see I have an 82 millimeter lens here. It's the G Master um, 16 to 35 millimeter. Uh, it's really good wide angle lens, which is nice under the water, but it also has a groove on the inside. I don't know if you can see here, but there's the, there's the groove there. So that, those, there's threads internally. So if you flip it around, it goes perfectly into the threads on your lens. That's really nice. So I'm turning it sideways, showing you all your pieces. You have this one, the little ring with the lip inside, remember? That one goes like this on top, so you can see, right? And then you have this other one that's just a, a tightening ring that goes on top like that, right? And the whole thing helps create a nice seal with your silicone. And that goes around your lens. And you can see I've been in the water for probably 30 minutes. And the only water that's there is the water that I just let into the camera. Super nice, okay? So then we go to the back side. Same kind of concept. Runs in the same physics. You have the, the pressure ring. Then you have the ring that fits on top of it that kind of gets a seal on your silicone. Whoops. Same concept. Uh, except for the only change on this one is that there's a bracket. The bracket is what's holding this porthole uh, in place, right? So it's not free floating. So you, you remove that from the lip. And then we're gonna work it down. And I did a little bit of extra here because I kind of shot in the afternoon. I ran out of daylight. So I was like, oh, I wanna see what light looks like under the water uh, with some of the camera gear that I have. And more light is best. It just looks so good with light. Uh, one of these days I'll figure out how to get more light rigged up to um, this setup. And it's probably external. But you want to make sure that you get past this little piece here. And then get it around the camera. You just kind of work it. Right? You want to make sure you're being gentle enough. Watch out for snafus, right? Little sniffles, sniggly bits, as I call it. Get it over that. And that's kind of where you start, right? So if I start putting this on, I put the housing on the lens first, like this. It's just sitting on the lens. Then I'd put part of the cap on, and then I would put this piece on. So we're doing it kind of backwards, but it kind of shows you the disassembly, shows you the assembly as well. And there you go. So that's what that looks like. And then you can take off your silicone housing, not a problem. Uh, one way you can do this once it's on is to actually take it off your lens and just take it off. And put your lens back on, and you're good. All right, there's your A7C. And it's not wet. It's not $5,000 worth of camera. I just, well, ish. Uh, 4,000 plus, right, of worth of camera. I just took under the water. And it was, I trusted Outex to, to get me there. And, and they did. And this is not a sponsored video. This is just me being inquisitive. So the next thing we need to do is you need to assemble this piece. And I can show you how it's done. It's pretty simple. 
the porthole, the porthole, which is the, the rear facing glass, you're going to make sure that this flat side is where this is sticking out. You make your L, right? It's making kind of like an L from the flat side. And they give you the screws to screw this on. It's two little Allen screws. And they also give you the piece here that screws into the bottom of the camera. So you can position your porthole where you want it. You can position it just like this and figure out where you want it, okay? Uh, I noticed that when I was doing this, I had a lot of headroom. I would say headroom. So like, if you see like this is kind of like pushed all the way up against it, right? Like there's a lot of space here. And it's just a, it's a small little coral, but I would have loved to have a spacer or been able to use this as a spacer. I didn't really have an extra screw to try this out, but use that as a spacer so I got more screen in the view rather than a lot of headroom. But it was okay, you're underwater, so make it work. And that is how you assemble, or in this case, disassemble the Altex Pro.